in behalf of our resident pastor, Pastor Allen Belva, lahat ng preachers at lahat po ng uh, members ng MBB Kuwait, kami po ay, guma- po ay gumabati ng isang uh, magandang araw sa inyong lahat, lalo tigit sa atin pong uh, senior pastor, Dr. Benny M. Abante at sa kanya pong buong pamilya. Isa pong malaking uh, uh, opportunity at uh, isa pong uh, pribilihyo ang muli makatayo sa inyong pong harapan upang ang salita ng Diyos ay uh, mangipangaral. So I would like to request everyone to please stand up and let's open our Bible in the book of Hebrews. This morning we are going to read two verses. Hebrews chapter 11, we're going to read verse 1 and verse 6. So if you are there, I would like you to read with me verse 1, ready, go. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And verse 6, But without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, once again, thank you so much, Lord, for this opportunity to preach your word. I pray, Lord, that you bless this message. Ikaw nawa ang magbigay ng dagdag kaalaman ang pangunawa ng karunungan Panginoon sa iyong mga anak na kasama po namin ngayon. So pag ito po aming dalangin ng may pansalamat sa pangalan ng Panginoon sa so Kristo na aming tagapagligtas. Amen. Thank you and please be seated. I have entitled this message with Faith is Essential. Faith is essential to us just as blood is to human life or oxygen is to our lungs. Faith is a core value of pleasing God. I mean, when we say essential, ibig sabihin, mahalagang mahalaga. Pangunahing kailangan. It is absolutely and vitally necessary. Faith is essential to our Christian living. When we are tested and tried, we must reach beyond mental reasoning into the realm of God's faith. The deeper we dig our faith well, the sweeter the water. Hebrews chapter 11 is the chapter often called the whole of faith. And it is no surprise that the key word in this chapter is the word faith. It is used 24 times in the chapter and twice more in the forms of faithful and belief. So first, let us look at verse 1 to see the biblical definition of faith given by the writer. Then we will jump to verse 6. So number one, what is faith? The Bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. So please notice the opening word, now. The word now connects this chapter to the earlier conversation in the prior four chapters in this book. If we are to avoid the apostasy o yung pagtalikod sa pananampalataya and the consequences o mga kahihinatnan the author described in chapter 10, then we must understand expectations of faith. O, kailangan naunawaan natin ang mga inaasahan, mga nararapat sa pananampalataya. If we are to inherit our full reward as servants of God, then we must live with a full appreciation of for what faith is and what a requires. And from there, the writer gives us the biblical definition of faith, including saving faith. So first, faith is the substance or assurance in other version of the Bible of things hoped for. Uh, the Greek word for the substance or the word assurance is the word hypostasis. An interesting word that can have two shades of meaning in English. It has an objective meaning as in 
reality of something. O katotohanan ng isang bagay. It has a subjective meaning as in having a certain viewpoint about an issue. I mean, pagkakaroon ng tiyak na pananaw patungkol sa issue, paksa o usapin. And I believe both meanings are working together in the writer's purposes. Letter A, faith is having a viewpoint that is rooted in the reality of what we know to be true. Biblical faith, let be biblical faith is not wishful thinking. Hindi po ganun ang pananampalataya. Hindi po ito patulad lamang ng kanais-nais na pag-iisip o yung pag-asa sa mga bagay na maaaring tiyak o hindi tiyak. Let us see faith is a perspective, pananaw, that understands the certainty of matters which cannot be proven. So for example, do you know what would happen if you jump off the Grand Hyatt building? 318 meters high po yan sa tagi. But you would answer, yes. I know I would fall and hit the ground and die. How do you know that? You have never done it. Yet you know that the gravity is a law of the universe. And you know that the distance of that fall will certainly end your life. So you have a perspective of certainty. One that is rooted in the reality of what you know to be true. And yet, it is still properly called faith. Why do we still call it faith? Because it means, it, because it concerns future events, which is the writer's second half of the definition. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Things hoped for refers to future events. Things that have not yet come to pass, but have been promised. That hope was created because someone or something gave us reason to expect these things to come to pass one day. And that promise inspired our hope. And that hope kept alive by our faith. And so, faith is a perspective on the future. One rooted in reality and truth, not in speculation or fantasy. That trust that things promised will come to pass. Naniniwala na ang mga bagay na ipinangako ay mangyayari. Yun ang pananampalataya. Once those things come to pass, then faith is no longer required. Instead, the, the reality is self-evident. As Paul says in Romans chapter 8, verse 24, For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man sees, why that he yet hope for? And then secondly, the writer says, The evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence, or in other translation, they use the word conviction. The evidence or conviction of things not seen. The Greek word for that word is also an interesting word. It is the word elenkos, which means proof. Proof. And once again, unseen means something of the future. So faith is the proof of something that is not yet reality. Our faith makes visible and tangible something that is unseen for now. For example, the rapture, the heaven, eternal life. So were it not for our faith, 
the reality of this future event would be completely absent in our experience. For example, your life insurance policy, whoever has, your life insurance policy is a testimony to your event of death. Your death is a future unseen event. But your life insurance policy is proof that you do not expect to live forever, at least not in this body. And so, our faith in the promises of Christ are proof of things that have yet to pass. Our faith and obedience to the Word of God serves a purpose in showing the world a truth that they could not see otherwise. Kaya napakainam po, napakahalaga. Oo, na tayo po ay nananampalataya. Na ito po ay makita ng mga taong wala pa sa Diyos. Na ito po ay makita ng ating mga mahal sa buhay. Sapagat yun po ay proof o katibayan. Oo. <coughs> ng ating pananampalataya at pagsunod. Na hindi po nila makikita kung hindi natin ipapakita sa pamamagitan ng pananampalataya. And then, last under this uh, topic, our faith is a proof that the Word of God is real and true and filled with the power to transform lives. Uh, tayo po yung mga buhay na patotoo. Nang dahil sa pananampalataya natin sa salita ng Diyos, ang ating mga buhay na bago. At marami pang mga buhay ang mababago kung tayo po ay magpapatuloy sa pananampalataya. So what is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now let us now jump to verse 6 of Hebrews chapter 11. Sabi po doon, but without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Sa saling Tagalog, at kung walang pananampalataya, ay hindi maaaring kalugdan ng Diyos. Sapagkat ang sino mang lumalapit sa Kanya ay dapat sumampalatayang may Diyos at siya ang tagapagbigay ng timpala sa mga masigasig na humahanap sa Kanya. The way to please God rests on faith alone. But that faith has two parts. First, saving faith understands that God is. Saving faith understands that God is. But to believe God is, doesn't mean to simply believe in His existence. James tells us that simply believing that God exists is without value. In James chapter 2, verse 19, Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. So masampalataya ka na ang Diyos ay isa, mabuti ang iyong ginagawa. Sabi ni Santiago, ang mga demonyo man ay sumasampalataya at nanginginig pa. Now, you know, even the sinful, rebellious demons know that God exists. And this fact is so obvious that even those sworn in allegiance with Satan acknowledge this truth. In fact, they are so convinced of the reality of an all-powerful judge of creation that James says it causes them to shudder or tremble in fear of their own coming judgment. Yun yun. Nevertheless, this recognition cannot save them from their sad faith. So, believing that God is means much more. It means accepting what God declares about 
himself. It means believing he is the one and living almighty God. It means accepting his representative, the son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. As Jesus says in John chapter 8, verse 42, Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. No. Sinabi sa kanila ni Jesus, kung ang Diyos ang iyong ama, ay iniipig ninyo sana ako. Sapagkat ako'y nagmula sa Diyos at ngayon ay naririto ako. Hindi ako naparito mula sa aking sarili, kundi sinugo ni niya ako. So furthermore, faith requires that we believe God is a rewarder of those who stick Him. Faith requires that we believe God is a rewarder of those who seek Him. Here, the writer is not defining saving faith anymore, but faith lived out. Pananampalatayang ipinamuhay. Saving faith is belief in Christ as Savior. O, yun yung pananampalatayang nagliligtas. Yun ang kailangan ng ating mga panauhin sa umagang ito. Kung mayroon po tayong kasama sa umagang ito ng mga panauhin na hindi pa nakatitiyak na pag ikaw ay namatay sa langit ka patutungo, ito po ang ang kop na panahon para sa iyo na tumanggap ka ng pananampalatayan na kaliligtas mula sa ating Panginoon. But here, ang tinatalakay na po ay yung faith lived out Faith lived out understands the reality of a reward waiting for those who let their faith guide their life. And in that way, their faith leads them to please the Father. And without that life of faith, the Bible says it is impossible to please God. It is impossible to please God. We are saved by a faith that is not of ourselves. The Bible says it is a gift of God. But we are rewarded for a life lived in accordance with that faith. And it is that life of faith that the writer is trying to encourage among his readers. Yes, we can celebrate the faith that saves, but that faith was given to us while we were sinners, while we were yet sinners and enemies of God. The scriptures emphasize a life lived in faith, which is the upward call of Christ. So the question is, do you want to please Christ? Are you structuring your life to meet that goal? If yes, then you are living by faith. On the other hand, have you assumed that every Christian is free to live without concern for judgment because of God's grace? Then you have not understood either Bible's teaching on faith or on judgment of the believer. So faith is essential. Sabi doon sa ating text, sa so verse 6 natin pong binasa. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Let me now conclude this message. Faith is essential and our faith must be rooted in the promises of God concerning Christ. We must live in expectation that rewards are available for those 
who serve God. You know, I praise and thank the Lord for giving so much wisdom to our pastor that he is able to really teach us what is living, living by faith really is. Teaching, leading, guiding us how to be faithful to God. And living by example in everything about faith for us to follow. And I praise the Lord for that. And if we will live in that awareness, we are far more likely to please our God. We will find temptations to sin knowing that rewards are on the line. We will resist the enemy knowing that he comes to steal our reward. We will sacrifice earthly gain for the prospect of greater rewards in life to come. And we will, grab, we will gladly accept persecutions, problems, and trials, knowing that this test gives opportunity to receive an even greater reward. We will live with eyes for eternity. Nawa po, sa may isang mensahe na yan, ang ating mga tagapakinig ay may natutunan. So, bali, sa aming mga panauhin na kasama po namin ngayon, kayo po ay napakahalaga sa amin. Ang katanungan po sa inyo sa umagang ito, kayo po ba ay nakatitiyak na pag kayo ay binawian ng hirang na buhay, ay sa langit kayo patutuwa? Kung ang sagot po ninyo ay hindi, tamang-tama po sa inyo ang minsahe nito sapagkat pinakailangan nyo po ng pananampalataya na nakaliligtas. O, sapagkat ang sabi, malipan na ikaw ay mananam, manampalataya, hindi ang Diyos malulugod sa iyo. Pero bago po yun, nais ko pong inyong maunawaan ang ilang mga bagay patungkol po sa inyo. Una-una, nais ko po na inyong ma-realize at matanggap na ikaw ay makasalanan at tulad ko. Sapagkat yun po ang pinapahayag ng salita ng Diyos. Ang sabi sa Roma 3.23, sapagkat ang lahat ay nagkasala at hindi nakabot sa kalawalhatian ng Diyos. O, ikaw po at ako ay makasalanan. O, sabi ng Bible, o, ang nagsasabing wala siyang kasalanan o hindi siya makasalanan, ay nililil lang niya ang kanyang sarili. O, therefore, sa umagang ito o sa araw na ito, Una ay kailangan mo pong magpaumbaba sa harapan ng Diyos at aminin na ikaw ay makasalanan. So, pangalawa, aminin mo man o hindi na ikaw ay makasalanan, o ikaw ay makasalanan. Ang pangalawa, may kapahamakan na naghihintay doon sa impyerno sa bawat taong makasalanan na wala pa kay Kristo. So, ang sabi sa Roma, sa is uh, 23, o Roma 6.23, For the wages of sin is death. Oh, whether you like it or not, one day you're going to die. Oh, but after that, the judgment. No. Whether you believe or not that there is hell, hell is real. At doon ka patungo. So in short, you have no choice oh, this morning. Kung atin po talagang pagbubulay-bulay ng gusto. Oh, you have no choice but to put your faith upon the word of God, upon God. Oo. Sabagkat walang ibang makapagliligtas sa'yo maliban sa pananampalataya mo. Oo. Sa salita ng Diyos, sa Diyos ng Biblia, sa kanyang anak na si Jesus na nabayubay sa krus, nagbuhos ng dugo, oo, namatay, upang ikaw na makasalanan tulad ko ay maligtas. Sabi po sa Romans chapter 5, verse 8, But God commended His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Something that is so amazing. Just imagine, isipin mo na ikaw ay isang makasalanan. Oh. Patungo doon sa kapahamakan sa impyerno. Pero ang sabi ng Biblia, ang Diyos ay nagkatawang tao pumarito sa lupa. Oh, namatay, nabayo, nabayubay sa krus, nagbuhos ng dugo, namatay para sa iyo at para sa akin. Dahil sa kanyang pag-ibig. Pero mga minamahal naming panauhin, malaman mo man ang katotohanan na ikaw ay makasalanan, 
na ikaw ay mapapahama na may Kristong nagliligtas sa umagang ito, kung hindi ka po mananampalataya, lahat ng nalalaman mo o tatanggapin mo ay walang kwenta. O, sapagkat ito po ang pinakamahalaga sa lahat. Ang sabi sa Romans chapter 10, verse 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be said, God is so good that His salvation is offered to everyone. O, wala pong pinipili. O, kahit ikaw na nanonood ngayon, o, kung hindi ka pa nakatitiyak na iyong kaligtasan, kung hindi ka nakatitiyak na pag ikaw namatay sa langit kapag ito mo, magpakumbaba ka nawa sa harapan ng Diyos na banal at makapangirihan sa umagang ito. At aminin mo na ikaw ay makasalanan. Oo, unawain mo na ikaw ay mapapahamak. Tanggapin mo ang katotohanan na may Kristo na nagmamahal sa iyo, na matay, okay? nagbuhos ng dugo, nabayubay sa krus, upang ikaw ay matubos sa iyong pagkakasala, upang ikaw ay mailigtas. Oo. Kailangan mong lumapit sa Panginoon, magsisi ng iyong mga pagkakasala na yan, at sabihin mo, Panginoon, mahabag ka po sa akin isang makasalanan. At ang sabi ng Bible, o, walang sino mang lumapit sa Panginoon ang kanyang itataboy. O, napakabuti po ng ating Panginoon sa mga taong handang tumanggap sa kanya. So nawa po sa umagang ito. O, naunawaan niyo ang mensahe patungkol sa pananampalataya. At matapos po ang message na ito, ay eh, meron pong video clip na inyong marinig at mas makapagbibigay po po sa inyo ng ang unawa patungkol sa kaligtasan na inyo pong kinakailangan. So, thanks to all of you who are present today, especially to our dear pastor. Okay, salamat po, pastor. May God bless you and your families. Purihin po ang ating Panginoon. Amen. Sa aming po mga bisita na nakapakinig ng mensahe ng Diyos sa hapong ito at uh, naunawaan po ninyo at nais po ninyo na magsisi ng inyong mga kasalanan at tumanggap sa Panginoon bilang inyong personal na tagapagligtas. Nais po namin kayong uh, pangunahan. Ang kinin po ninyo itong simpleng panalangin po ina ito at uh, kausapin po ninyo ang Panginoon. Hindi po namin alam ang inyong puso at isipan. It's between you and the Lord. Tayo po ay manalangin. Dakilang Diyos, inaamin ko po na ako'y makasalanan. Walang katiyakan ng buhay na walang hanggan. Lord, dalangin ko po na patawarin niyo po ako sa lahat ng aking mga kasalanan. Linisin niyo po ako, Panginoon, sa lahat ng aking karamihan. At tinatanggap ko po kayo sa aking puso bilang aking personal na tagapagligtas. Ako po ay nananampalataya sa inyo bilang aking Diyos at aking personal na tagapagligtas. Maraming salamat po sa buhay na walang hanggan na kaloob ninyo. Ito po ay aking dalangin. Sa matamis sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Sa aming po mga bisita na nalangin, panoorin po ninyo ang video na ito upang makita po ninyo kung paano po namin kayo mas lalo na matutulungan at maisasama sa aming panalangin. Let's watch this video. Kung ikaw ay pinagpala ng iyong napanood o nais mong maunawaan pang lalo ang tungkol sa salita ng Diyos, hayaan mong makipag-ugnay kami sa iyo. Ibigay lamang ang ilang mahalagang impormasyon sa iyong sarili sa pamamagitan ng aming online form. I-type ang go.mbbe.org slash accept sa inyong internet browser at punan ng mga impormasyon ukol sa iyong sarili. Maaari ka rin magtungo sa mbbe.org para sa iba pang impormasyon tungkol sa aming mga gawain at pagsamba. Kagalakan namin na ikaw ay makilala bilang isang bagong kaibigan at kapamilya kay Kristo ang iyong sariling Panginoon at agapagligtas.